And so here we are, finally learning about one of my least favorite kinds of bugs, butterflies. <laughs> Take it away, Jason. All right. I mean, I sympathize a little bit. I do feel like butterflies are a little overrated Definitely. compared to all these other amazing arthropods out there. And they're kind of disgusting, which I hope we get into in a little bit. Okay, maybe a little bit. Okay, yeah. yeah. We'll just <laughs> touch the surface and you can do your own research based off of what you learn here today. Yes, we will be a neutral presentation about butterflies. So, actually, today we're talking about butterflies and moths. I they, like um, moths. Oh, yeah, moths are fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're very cute. Um, in fact, um, they are basically the same thing. Butterflies are just one branch on the moth family tree that is uh, kind of unique in that they're day flying and that they don't spin cocoons. So, yes, butterflies don't come from cocoons. That is the biggest misnomer. It's one of my pet peeves in entomology. So today we're going to clarify the difference between a pupa, a cocoon, and a chrysalis. Yay! <laughs> Let's learn about the difference. <laughs> All right, so we have a spread here of various moth and butterfly caterpillars and pupae. So pupa is the stage between the larva and the adults. Um, a lot of insects have this uh, development cycle, including beetles, bees, ants, and wasps, flies, and of course butterflies and moths. And in butterflies and moths, their larva is called a caterpillar. So we have four different types here. We'll start on this side with one of our most beloved butterflies, the monarch. So monarch caterpillars are very striking. They have these black and yellow and white rings, and they kind of uh, are bright warning colors to show that they are poisonous from feeding on milkweeds. And on this uh, horsetail milkweed here, you can see some pupae, monarch pupae hanging here. Next up, we have a moth, the uh, tobacco hornworm. You may have seen these on your tomato plants. Um, they eat anything in the nightshade family, including this uh, silver nightshade that grows everywhere. And this is the tobacco hornworm pupa. Next, we have a cecropia moth caterpillar. This is a beautiful, 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 beautiful moth caterpillar. Not full grown. That'll be about four inches before it spins a cocoon like this. So this is a cocoon. But inside the cocoon is a pupa, just like the others. This pupa has become deceased, unfortunately. Um, it's just uh, doesn't look like a whole lot. But a cocoon is a silken case that protects a pupa. Things like butterflies, they become a pupa hanging from a plant. Um, here's a pupa for our fourth caterpillar, the black swallowtail, another butterfly that feeds on dill and parsley and fennel and things in the carrot family. And here's a pupa for one of those. So what do all these pupae have in common? They aren't a special casing or a magical thing that a caterpillar goes inside of. This is the caterpillar at this stage of its life. This is its skin. It has wings. It has a head. It has a proboscis or the tongue used to drink nectar. It has legs. The whole insect is here. It's just folded up and brown. So inside that cecropia moth cocoon, that cecropia moth pupa has the same parts. So does the butterfly pupa. Now butterfly pupae are often called a chrysalis because they often have gold spots like these monarch pupae over here. But if you look really closely, it has all the same things. It has its wings, abdomen, thorax, head, legs in between the wings. It's hard to tell because they're camouflaged as twigs or leaves or water droplets. But a butterfly pupa or chrysalis is just what the butterfly looks like at that stage. It's not a case. That's just its skin. It's just a folded up butterfly with wings and it can't really move until it does its final molt into the adult butterfly skin. So again, molting to grow just like any other arthropod. So cool. Yeah, I feel like this, what was it, a hornworm? Yes, so Yeah, so here. this one is a great example of like really, you could really clearly see um, all the different parts of the little bug. Yeah, because these uh, go underground to become a pupa, uh, they don't need to disguise it as a leaf or anything. And since the moth is inside a cocoon, or the caterpillar is inside the cocoon to become a pupa, it doesn't have to make it look like a leaf. So it looks like just a normal pupa. So fun fact of the day. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. My pleasure. Tune in next time, and we're going to go over some other cool butterfly species that we have here at the Bugarium. Oh, yeah.